Okay, so we'll move on to a problem now. Okay, so this is a typical problem that they would give you for NMR. I give you a little bit extra information to just fill in the gaps. So they give you molecular formula of C5H9O2Br. They give you an IR spectrum of 1734, which you know tells you a functional group of an ester. And they also give you your NMR spectrum. Now, first things first, you do your degree of saturation, which I already did here. In this case, it's 1, because you go 5 times 2, which is 10, plus 2, which is 12, minus 9 minus 1, which is 10, which is 2, sorry, and divided by 2, and then you get 1. So that's how you do degree of saturation. So you know there's some kind of double bond, which you know since there's an ester, which is right here. That's your degree of saturation right there. It could have been a ring, because the ring is also a degree of saturation. But in this case, they tell you that it's an ester, so that checks more. That's one check mark that we can do. And we all we took care of one carbon and two oxygens, which is really nice by looking at this ester. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out what do, what do each of these peaks represent. And they were nice enough to give you how many hydrogens are splitting by, or how many hydrogens belong to here. So three hydrogens are showing a peak of a triplet. So let's do this step by step. And it's not very de-shielded as well. It's very, very not, it's like up, up fields or not shielded at all. So you got three hydrogens. And now we have to work a little bit backwards. Three hydrogens and they're showing a peak of three. So what, what's the n number? This tells you the n plus one number. So n plus one in this case is three. So n in that case would be two when you move that over there. So there's two hydrogens beside the, these three, beside these three hydrogens. So we can draw that. So now that's what this is for this guy right here. Okay. Now if you know that these guys are gonna be splitting by here, these can these one these two can also split these three. Then what kind of pattern would they show? If there's two hydrogens, the three will cross over from me, n for them is three, and you add one, n plus one is four, so you're gonna show a quartet. Where do you see a quartet of these four? At the end here, right? Now there is one, two, three, which is n equals three, and you add one, which is four, which is a quartet. So these two are belonging to those guy, that guy. And look, it's pretty de-shielded, so there's something it's right is beside something that is very electronegative. And since the peak is above four, that's usually beside an oxygen, or, or in this case, specifically an oxygen. Okay? And that makes sense because there are no more hydrogens around it that can split, which makes a quartet nicely. So you got, you got, got this done and that done. And you know if it's an oxygen, there has a single bond oxygen, that we know what kind of functional group we have, so we can put that there. So we're almost done here. Now we all we gotta account for is how do we get these two peaks? So in this case, let's do it on the side here. So we got a two hydrogens that are split, showing a pattern of three. So n plus one in this case is three. So n in that case would be two. So these this, these hydrogens are beside a carbon that ha that carries two hydrogens. So let's look at this guy now. Same same pattern here. These hydrogens, two hydrogens, are beside showing the same pattern of triplets, so they're beside also a two high carbon hydrogen. In that case, these two perfectly line up here. So the only diff the only way you can differentiate them is looking at their deshielding effect. This car this hydrogen is much more deshielded than this hydrogen. So this has to be beside something more electronegative. In that case, the only thing left in our structure is your BR. And in this this guy, so this this hydrogen is here, and that hydrogen is there. And then all you got to do now is just connect the pieces. So we got a CH2, we got a CH2, which has this has a BR, which has a C double bond O, an O, CH2, CH3. 
So that's how you, this, I know it's a little complicated, but this is how you would do a typical NMR problem. They are, give, they are they're giving you the environment of the hydrogens, and now we have to put the pieces together, one, by knowing the chemical shift, two, by knowing the NMR. In this case, they gave us the integration, which was really good, and we didn't have to use coupling, uh, coupling constant. But let's go over it real quickly again. We got your formula, found the degree of mass saturation. We had the IR, we found the functional group. Then looking at each individual peak, we did it step by step and figured out which hydrogens are belonging to which peak. And then we just added up the whole molecule. So this right here is your structure. Okay. Hope that was helpful, guys. Um, please rate, comment, subscribe, and have a nice day.